Thank you for joining us this evening, everyone. Um, so tonight I'm going to be talking about how beavers can help uh, the wildlife. And this is just a follow on, basically a follow on talk from um, a talk I gave uh, to North Wales Wildlife Trust a few weeks ago. Um, so my name's Alicia, as Mark has said. Um, so I'm the Welsh Beaver Project Officer for Wildlife Trust Wales. Um, in total, I've been working with beavers for over 10 years now and the last five, five years um, with, with the Wildlife Trust. So just a brief overview of who we are. So the Welsh Beaver Project is actually a Wales-wide project led by Wildlife Trust Wales on behalf um, of the five trusts um, within Wales. North, it's basically started with North Wales Wildlife Trust uh, back in 2005, as Mark said, and it's just basically gone on from there. So at the end of the talk, I'll do a very brief update um, of where we are today with beavers in Wales. But just as a brief uh, recap in terms of beaver ecology, so beavers are rodents. They're in fact the largest rodent we have in the Northern Hemisphere. But unlike other rodents, they're actual social and monogamous creatures. They will pair for life. Um, and a beaver family consists of the breeding pair, the male and female. And it may just be those two individuals, or it may be a family group of two or three generations of young. And they're quite a close knit family group as well. They only have one litter per year. It's very different to um, other rodents. They are actually quite uh, slow breeders. And they have a litter of two to three young within that uh, litter. So the young are known as kits, um, an average two or three. The kits will stay with the family group until about two, three years old. At this age, they reach sexual maturity, and that's when they start um, dispersing to, to look for new mates and start their own family group. In some circumstances, though, uh, those young, um, even when they get to two, three years old, may decide to stay with a family group and they become non-breeding individuals and they help their parents raise the next generation um, of kids. So as again, just again, another example of how closely knit a beaver family can be. They're also quite long lived animals. They can live for up to about 10 plus years. They're also very territorial as well. So although they're very happy within their family group, they don't tolerate neighbouring beavers too well. So they will scent mark around their territory and um, their scent mounds can be piles of earth or tree stumps. Um, the scent glands are towards a, near the base of the tail, uh, the castoreum glands, um, and they'll basically just scent mark on those, those mounds. And it's just a warning to their neighbours to say, keep away, this is my patch. It's also a way that they can keep um, in touch with their family group as well. Chemical communication is really key with beavers. They're semi-aquatic creatures, so famous for being in or near water. And this is mainly a predator avoidance strategy. They rarely like going more than 20 metres away from the water's edge. So main predators for beavers um, are your large predators like wolves, bears, lynx. Obviously, we don't have those predators in Wales anymore, um, but once upon a time we did. And other parts of uh, beaver range in parts of Europe, those large predators are still around. And so Beavers are um, still wary of those predators being out and about. In a Welsh landscape, um, likely predators of beavers are animals like foxes, possibly otters in some oca um, occasions, and domestic dogs. And it's really the young um, that are more prone to predation um, within a Welsh landscape. The, the adults are pretty um, robust, but still, they're still very wary and still like being in or near water. And as you can see from the picture, the uh, sort of sensory organs, eyes, ears, nose, are on the top of the head. So when beavers first come into the water, they can have a good look around, um, good sniff, um, look them out for any danger. And if they feel safe, that's when they'll go on the way and go away foraging for the night. They're also herbivores, so entirely herbivorous. Um, so they don't eat fish, uh, so some misinformation um, about that. But their diets, they have quite a wide dietary range, and this can consist of wooded material. So deciduous trees like birch and willow make a large part of their diet and it's the bark of the trees that they're really after. Um, generally autumn winter that they go for wooded species. In the summertime, spring summertime, they'll switch to a slightly um, soft vegetation. So grasses, herbs, aquatic plants, a lot of greenery forms their diets um, within the summer months. And again, they'll, they'll take a wide range um, of plant material in the summer months as well as the winter as well. They're very good at selecting uh, material and very good at um, making sure that they don't overgraze um, an area. Um, so you get sort of a, a mosaic of different vegetation coming through in a beaver habitat. They're also crespuscular, which basically means they're active dawn and dusk. And again, this is just a, another way that they can avoid um, predators. 
So in terms of what beavers are um, and what they do, so often described as a keystone species, and this is just a term which refers to an animal that has um, enormous sort of effect on its surrounding ecosystem, so it plays a critical role within with maintaining the structure of its local ecosystem, the local ecology, which can support many other species. And research has shown that this is what beavers do. And a good way to picture this is by a stone archway, where the keystone um, is a top stone supporting the, ar the archway. It keeps everything intact. However, if you remove that keystone, the archway will collapse. And that's essentially what happens. If you remove beavers from an ecosystem, over time, that local ecosystem will degrade. It will collapse over time. And your biodiversity, once beavers have left, is a lot lower than it would have been when beavers were there, keeping that um, ecosystem, keeping the local ecology intact and balanced and supporting those different animals, wildlife within that system. Um, so and here's a really nice uh, drawing that sort of shows what beavers can do, a nice illustration. This is uh, being produced by an NGO in the Netherlands um, called um, Ark Nature. Um, and yeah, as this picture shows, it's got beavers in the habitat, uh, working away. It's, there's abundance of plant life, um, amphibians, fish, um, birds, um, birds using standing deadwood, mammals as well, grazing animals, uh, lower, um, lower downstream. I mean, it's, obviously it's an artist's representation, but it shows that what can happen within a beaver habitat if it's allowed to develop and the many different animals that can benefit and plants as well. So over the next few slides, I'll be looking at some examples of where, beav uh, where beavers are having a benefit um, on different uh, wildlife. And so through beavers activity, the way they can benefit um, wildlife is through the different things that they can do. So as I mentioned, beavers like wood material, material for, for feeding, uh, birch and willow uh, forms a large part of the diet. They fell the trees to get to the bark and the leaves. They're not very good at climbing, so they need to fell um, the trees in order to get to that material. The top part of the tree will die off eventually, but the base of the tree, the root system is still intact. And eventually you'll get regrowth, regeneration coming through. So this picture is of a, a beaver tree, uh, sort of birch tree that has been felled sorry, a willow tree that has been felled and the new growth coming through at the base um, of the tree. And that new regeneration will then come up um, and be a lot bushier um, as it grows. So rather than just one stem, you get lots of stems coming through. And this can benefit a range of wildlife as well. So invertebrates can take hold in here, can be really beneficial for small mammals and small birds um, as well. So providing nesting opportunities, foraging opportunities for other species as well. Beavers live, live in burrows um, or lodges, which are basically underground. Uh, they form these on the sort of side of riverbanks, or sometimes on if the bank's too shallow, they'll form a mound on top of that bank and create a chamber and just pack it with uh, mud and sticks to protect it. Um, these, are, these areas can provide um, habitats for other mammals as well. So there's been records of small, small rodents, uh, small mammals living within these um, burrows, mice, um, voles would have been shown to utilize um, burrows, even when beavers are living there as well. Water shrews too have been found um, recorded living in here. And otters will sometimes use abandoned beaver burrows. So there's a range of different animals that can take, take advantage of those habitats. Beavers will also build dams um, and create channels. So in the top uh, right-hand corner, this is a, a beaver dam. Um, so when they build a dam, a pool of water creates, um, it's created behind it. And this can be uh, fantastic for fish and um, amphibians, uh, otters as well. So a whole range of uh, wildlife take advantage um, of beaver dams. Beavers create dams to stabilize water and to raise the water level. So they like water to be at least a meter deep and if it's not quite deep enough, that's why they, they may build a dam to raise the water level um, and then that just provides them a bit more protection. So your small streams and tributaries are what beavers are likely uh, to dam. And we'll look at dams um, a little bit later on. Uh, bottom right hand corner is a channel connecting up a wetland habitat that's been created um, by a beaver. Um, again, just as I mentioned, they like being in or near water um, and these channels can be very beneficial and water bowls have been known to move into these areas um, where you get these channels. This photo here was taken at an enclosed beaver site in Wales and it's just to show you an example of what a beaver habitat uh, can, can look like. In this photo, and well in this 
habitat has been beavers here for over six years now. And as you can still see, there's still mature trees within this landscape. They don't take everything down. They don't fell every single tree. So you get different age structures being created with a, a beaver habitat. Mature trees, and then you have trees that have been felled and coppice. So you get new growth coming through. You have um, vegetation at mid height, canopy, as well as the ground flora as well coming, coming through. And with beaver habitats, by felling the trees and coppicing the trees, it can break up the canopy, allow more light to come through, which can be really beneficial for the ground flora. And at this site, we've noticed the soft vegetation, the flowers that have bounced back over the years are just phenomenal. And each year it looks better and better. So in terms of plant species, there's a whole range um, of plants that can benefit uh, from beaver um, in beaver habitats. There's some examples here of marsh marigold, uh, water mint, ragged uh, robin, um, yellow flag iris, all examples of what can come through um, by beavers sort of maintaining, restoring habitats. And beavers will utilize these as well. They will feed on these, this plant material as well as many others. They're known to eat brambles as well. Water lilies uh, form part of their diet. Again, just a, a wide dietary range. And all these things coming through will be beneficial um, for other species, great for pollinators um, as well. Just examples of how it can support other things within the ecosystem. Invertebrates can do really well um, in beaver habitats and a really good indicator of measuring sort of the, the impacts beavers are having um, within a local ecosystem. Dragonflies do really well, um, as you can imagine, due to the amount of water that's around, as well as the vegetation um, that's around. So again, these photos are from various beaver sites. The dragonflies are from a, a beaver site in Wales, an enclosed beaver site. So we've got broad-bodied chaser, azure uh, dragonfly, uh, beautiful damozel. The left hand corner, we have an older fly um, just resting on a beaver felled um, stump. This is taken in Bavaria. Older flies um, like to lay their eggs um, on stems near water and the larvae are aquatic. So a great example of how a beaver habitat could support um, such a species. Looking at some studies, there's been lots of studies undertaken on the ecological benefits of beavers uh, right across Europe. And I've just taken a few examples for the next few, few slides. Dragonflies, as I mentioned, um, can do really well and a good way to, to measure the impacts beavers are having. So these two studies are from Bavaria. The graft is actually from beaver sites in Western Franconia um, in Bavaria. And this study looked at a range of 10 sample areas of watercourses and floodplains over a number of years. So they started in 1999 um, studying these sites, looking at many different animals um, and dragonflies um, were formed one of them. They looked at 41 species of dragonflies and damselflies um, and 21 um, vulnerable species uh, were recorded in this area. And they found um, that 13 dragonfly species has positive effects on 13 species because of the benefits of beavers moving in the area, maintaining the habitat, recreating new habitats. Um, and they just found this year on year when they had beavers in the area. Um, and they found that these um, effects remained even after 2014 um, and beyond. However, they did find a decline in species populations when beaver activity stopped or declined and beavers moved on to a new area. The poster itself um, are beaver sites in the Eiffel mountain range. This was a study that was conducted in the summers of uh, 2011 and 2012. And this looked at beaver sites and non-beaver sites to compare them um, in similar habitats. And they found where there were beaver ponds and active um, beaver activity going on. There was 29 dragonfly species recorded within the, the beaver ponds. In the non-beaver ponds, they only recorded four dragonfly species. Um, and in the beaver ponds that where they've been, where beavers have moved on and abandoned them, there was uh, recorded seven species of dragonfly. So still benefits where you had beavers leaving the areas, you had still a knock-on effect of some of the, the activity, but not as great as if beavers were there and present at the time. And with these species as well, the dragonfly species coming through were boreal species as well as Mediterranean species, so quite a range um, for the habitats, the study area that they were looking at. And they just put this down to the, a range of different habitats that were being created and restored with the beavers being there. So extreme habitats as well as pond habitats, providing different areas um, for the different species to utilize and benefiting a range of different species. Invertebrates in turn provide, can provide food for other species, particularly birds. Um, again, uh, going back to the site in, in Wales, um, these photos were all taken from this site. 
pied wagtails do really well in this area and they love the abundance of dragonflies in the summer months. So you can just see them picking off the dragonflies. Here the pied wagtails are walking over the pondweed, just picking off the dragonflies as, as they go. Um, as of last year, um, fly, uh, pied um, fly catchers and spotted fly catchers have started coming back to this site, um, returning here and being resident here as well. Uh, Kingfishers have started moving into the area over the past two or three years. Kingfishers have been coming back. Tawny owls also live here and woodpeckers as well. Woodpeckers loving the standing dead wood that's around. And here's some footage uh, from that site of the uh, pied wagtail feeding its young. And then this footage is quite an interesting one. You may notice a beaver in the, the right-hand corner just swimming across the pond. Just pay particular close attention to what's by it. You may see a, a small bird popping up. That's a little grebe um, that's coming up. And what we've noticed over the years is as soon as the beavers emerge, the little grebes are there foraging right beside, beside the beaver, just um, watching its every move and just following the beaver wherever it goes. And it's got us wondering whether um, are the beavers making it easier for the, the grebes to forage? Is this a learned behaviour since the beavers have been there? Have the little grebes learnt that by following the beaver it's easier to forage? Or are we witnessing a behaviour um, that's been lost and just returned um, with the beavers returning? Um, the little grebes have just realised that um, it could be easier to, to forage. So are we witnessing a relationship that's co-evolved over many years and we're witnessing once again? So some interesting behaviour have been seen at various beaver sites and the, the little grebes here will even alert us to the beavers emerging. The beavers can be very silent but the little grebes will soon notify us to the beavers being out and they're foraging away alongside the beavers um, and the ducks loving the, the beaver site um, as well. Amphibians can also do really well in beaver areas, frog uh, toes, newts, again the abundance of invertebrates around for foraging but also the amount of water as well. Um, and a good sort of example of this is from Devon Wildlife Trust. They have an enclosed uh, beaver site, which started in 2010, uh, 2011, and they've been monitoring um, the amphibian um, here, um, particularly looking at frog spawn counts. And they noticed at the start of the project, it's an enclosed site with a pair of beavers. They only recorded 10 clumps of frog spawn, but in 2017, they had over 600 uh, clumps of frog spawn were being counted at that site. It's mainly just due to the abundance of water within the area and the frogs just utilizing that. With that, that's had a knock-on benefit with the reptile species there. And they've noticed grass snakes um, returning to, to this area, basically because the amount of frogs are around. So again, a foraging uh, resource there, reptiles are moving in, the grass snakes are moving in. Um, grass snakes are also um, a wetland species, um, not just within grassland habitats, they love wetland areas as well. So again, beaver habitat being an ideal area for, for grass snakes and this would be great for a species that in some areas isn't doing very well. So it'd be interesting to see um, how they fare in other beaver sites um, around Britain. Fish are another uh, species uh, sort of uh, animal that can, can benefit from beavers. The relationship between beavers and fish though is complex. Um, and over the next few slides, we'll look at this in a little bit more detail. A number of projects now have been studying the impacts on fish. And in parts of North America, they've even looked at reintroducing beavers in some areas to improve habitats for fish populations. So we'll go back to uh, Devon and with Devon Wildlife Trust and the River Otter Beaver Trial. So the Be River Otter Beaver Trial started in 2015 um, and finished this year. But as part of the monitoring, they looked at fish populations. So Southampton University and West Country Rivers Trust um, undertook a lot of studies and sampling on the River Otter. The river otter is a really important habitat for a range of fish, fish species, salmon, uh, trout, bullhead, stone larch, eel, um, lamp, brook lamprey as well, are all some of the, uh, the species that can be found within the river. The fish populations, they haven't done so well in the river otter uh, for many years. Um, fish populations have de been depleted, partly because of diffuse pollution, poor habitat, diversity, man-made barriers to fish migration. And so these were all had an impact. And so this is a perfect opportunity to look at what was there 
within the river and whether beavers have had an impact um, on these populations. So as part of the, the River Otter Beaver Trial, as part of their Science and Evidence Forum, they looked at um, the different things that need to be assessed um, and what should be assessed. So as I mentioned, the relationship between fish and beavers is complex. There are many positives, but there can be negatives as well. So these need to be looked at and looked at it from a scientific um, basis as well, not just looking at perceived positives and negatives, looking at um, what actually happens on the ground. And looking at localised areas, but also how this impacts on the overall catchment as well, and looking at it from a catchment scale. Um, and it should be looking at fish populations as a whole, not just on individual um, uh, fish um, itself. Um, this study, they looked at a range of uh, the range of uh, species present within the river and not just necessarily on salmonids and looking at the impacts of flow conditions on different fish species and the life stages. So different areas of beaver ha habitats can have benefits or maybe negative on different fish species. So taking all these into account within their studies. Beaver dams are often cited um, as potentially having a negative impact on on fish populations but the, again it's complex um, and it can be both positive uh, and negative for fish. As I mentioned beavers create dams to uh, maintain the water level, to increase the water level and to maintain the water level so they like having a depth of at least a meter and so they, they build the dams to, to ensure that the entrance of the lodge is always underwater. Again it's that safety element to it for the beavers and to ensuring they're nearer a new food resource so they're always near um, within 20 meters of the water's edge if they can be and so by creating a beaver dam this can create refuges uh, for fish species it can create pools for um, fish to, to um, sort of rest in for nurseries um, but some people do have concerns that maybe beaver dams could have an impact on migratory fish such as salmon and trout the word that they won't be able to jump over the dams with the study on the River Otter, uh, no dams were built on the River Otter itself. Um, this is to be expected um, as a main river. Uh, main rivers are often just too wide for beavers to build dams and often deep enough. And so the dams will just get washed away if a beaver even tried to, um, to build such a dam in such an area. It's often your smaller streams and tributaries where beavers are likely to build dams. So for the River Otter, this was a great way to study the impacts on dams in some areas where those dams were allowed to be built um, and allowed to develop. And so in this area, um, there are a range of um, watercourses they, they, they were allowed to look at beaver dams. So in this particular area, uh, a beaver dam was allowed to, to be built, so there was worry that it could be an obstacle. But over time, if you do allow beaver dams to, to, build, to be built, you get bypass channels being created around the dam, and water will even overtop the dam as well. Beaver dams are made of mud and sticks, so they are permeable, they will let water leach through, and they will let water um, leak around the sides. So they're not solid structures, um, and these can allow passages um, for migratory fish and can even create new gravels further downstream, which could be potentially be spawning grounds for some for um, some fish species. So here's an example, just a close-up example of a beaver dam. Um, and as you can see, um, there are outflows on this dam as well, overtopping the dam. So this can create areas for, be uh, for fish to use um, as a passage where um, beaver dams can be um, an issue is often in low flow events when you haven't got water overtopping the dam or going round and so that can create a potential barrier for fish but as soon as it starts raining and the water level starts increasing these channels um, these overflows do soon fill up again and can then be used as, as channels for migratory fish um, to utilize. As said um, see lots of pros and cons and it's some of the it's one of those things that needs to be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis and here is some footage from the river otter um, and this is of a uh, fish jumping over a beaver dam within one of the study sites on the river otter so on the river tail that goes into to the cat, river otter catchment so i'll just play this so just play uh, keep a close eye on this video So did you see it jump over the dam? So I'll just play it again, uh, just in case uh, you missed it. It is very, very quick.
and there we go over it goes again and so again uh, just so anecdotal evidence um, of that happening um, in some areas okay um impacts of beaver dams they can vary over time as well so in some situations beaver dam uh, may have may be negative and if it's allowed to develop could be positive and vice versa so um, and dams can be mobile and temporary. If you leave them, things can change. So if a beaver dam is allowed to develop, uh, could have benefits. And in this case, in some areas on the River Otter, they did find that some of the dams were, were temporary. So in this case, with this dam, um, it was a possible barrier to fish passage. They just left it and over time, um, it did wash out. And by doing that, it created lots of uh, clean gravels um, below where the, the dam washed out. And so those gravels um, are potentially a good spawning ground uh, for, for migratory fish. And so again, utilizing uh, different habitats and beaver areas are mosaic um, of different habitats. Uh, the restoration uh, beavers, beaver activity can restore different um, rope processes. It's restoration of dynamic processes within a beaver habitat. Um, it does vary over time as well. Um, in some areas we'll get deep deep pools, mobile gravels, shallow pools as well, um, channels being created, wooded material within within that catchment. So it's having it's about having a variety of different habitats within a river catchment, not just being all um, linear and all the same, same type of habitat right down um, the catchment and the water channel. And by having that dynamic processes of different habitats within an area can benefit many different um, species as well. With the results of the River Otter beaver trials, as I mentioned, the, the study, uh, the trial finished this year, those the information has been collated and they found overall that with regards to fish, um, the beaver pools had lots of benefits. Uh, beaver pools in the area supported the highest uh, fish biomass and also had the largest trout compared uh, with downstream and with control areas where there's no beaver impact at all. The beaver pools also were better habitats for other species, for lampreys um, as well, creating refuges for them. Bullheads, however, um, did better in the riffle habitats below the beaver dams where they like uh, the fast flowing waters. So again, just showing different uh, uh, areas can benefit different species. So from fast water to deep water, slow water, etc. The beaver Obviously the River Otter Beaver Trial was only a five year trial. So these are just results after five years. And so further research is required to look at midterm and long-term impacts. Um, as beavers have only been back for a short time in Britain, we are limited in our capacity to look at the impacts um, on fish. We're now at opportunity one where we can look at this a lot closer and we can go back to Devon and look at how these impacts vary over time. And then in other areas, we can look at uh, from the very beginning and look at those impacts over time. So a really good opportunity now to look at this further and there's many study sites potentially out there for us to start looking at this. So for more information on the River Otter Beaver Trial, so, um, the report is available to download from the Devon Wildlife Trust website. It's definitely well worth a read, a lot of information on there. So the Fisher uh, re reports are in there as well as other things from uh, public consultations, to um, tourism, uh, to other ecological benefits as well. So uh, lots and lots of information within that report. And then looking at um, other, other wildlife as well, mammals can do really well in the beaver habitat, particularly animals such as the mini beaver, the water vole. Again, uh, water vole um, in this case, in this photo is from a, a beaver site in Wales. Um, here we have the water vole feeding on an apple that's been left out uh, for the beavers. So water voles can do really well in beaver habitats. The channels that beavers create uh, create fantastic habitats for water voles, nice soft banks for the water voles to burrow in. The vegetation as well is great for the water voles to, uh, to, uh, to forage. Um, and it's evidences uh, from Europe and even parts of England, uh, water voles have start moving in, started to move in to beaver habitats as well. So this can be really exciting for a mammal that hasn't done fared very well over many years, partly due to um, predation by, by mink, but also loss of habitat as well. So potentially we could maybe start seeing the recovery of a native mammal through the activities uh, of beaver, restoring those, those habitats um, where water voles may be present. 
we have some footage of a waterfall coming out um, onto the side of a, a bank and just again taking some food that's been left out for the beavers. Other mammals that can benefit um, are bats. And this is a study in Poland that looked at three, the three Pipiswell species and nocturnal species, and looking at the abundance um, in relation to beaver habitat. So looking at the foraging impacts um, on, on bats. So they studied beaver active areas to non-beaver areas. So looked at forests um, that had gaps in the canopy or, um, or were flooded because of beaver activity to areas that had no beaver activity, uh, meadows uh, without any beaver activity and then flooded meadows due to beaver activity. And generally what they found is where you had um, uh, bat, uh, beaver activity, there was an increase in foraging bats. And that's mainly because the bats were following, following all the invertebrates within those areas because of um, what the beavers had created. And so the bats were just for, following uh, the food resource. Other studies have also shown that bats can utilize standing deadwood uh, for roosting areas. And they've also been seen to roost in sort of snags on old beaver dams and in lodges, beaver lodges as well. So again, a variety of different habitats being created which could benefit um, bats. Mustelids can also do really well in beaver habitats. There's a, a pole cat just having a, a, for, a look around uh, and just being very curious. and otters as well. And otters are probably the one um, animal we get asked most about. So earlier in the, the talk, I mentioned that otters could be a potential predator um, to beavers. And this is mainly during the breeding season. Um, I've noticed when I was working in Scotland um, that otters took a particular interest during the beaver breeding season, which is late spring uh, going into summer. Um, and they'll take a lot of notice around the beaver lodge. And we suspected that the otters were hearing the young beavers within, within the lodge and were trying to get in. And potentially if the otters got in, they could predate um, on those young beavers. Um, a baby beaver can be the size of a water bowl, um, so it could be prone to predation. However, as I mentioned, the beaver family is a really co close unit and they will protect those, those lodges and keep an eye on, on those beaver kits. And so the otters rarely got a chance to even um, get, get into the beaver lodge. So the beavers just fended the otters away. That's the only time really when there's gonna be potential conflict between beavers and otters. The rest of the time they get on very well and otters can benefit from beavers. Um, beavers are pretty um, not too bothered about otters but the otters can definitely ben benefit. As I mentioned, abandoned beaver burrows can do um, Otters like using those, um, we'll take them over and use those to rest in and to be breeding sites as well. Um, otters, um, lots of evidence of otters foraging within beaver pools and around beaver dams, amphibians, fish, um, all providing uh, a great food resource um, for otters within a beaver habitat. And it's a lot easier for otters to, to forage within a beaver habitat, so shallow water, slow water as well, compared with say um, a major river. Um, so yeah, so otters can do really well and we've noticed this uh, at many beaver sites, otters just moving in and just having a good look around and sort of taking the opportunity um, to forage within these areas. And this is, I'm just going to play a clip from a BBC documentary uh, with uh, Sir David Asperger. This was filmed in North America and it's just, although it's North America, it just shows example of uh, another uh, other benefits beavers can have and what can can live with inside a um, a beaver lodge and other animals that can can benefit so i'll just um skip to um the the location for this video so just bear with me while i bring it up
we noticed that the muskrats regularly left the lodge to forage under the ice. And on several occasions, they returned a few minutes later with a load of fresh reeds. Perhaps the muskrats are paying rent by regularly providing fresh bedding to the lodge. Maybe that is why the beavers accept them and even allow them to share their food. Infrared lights, however, are no longer welcome, it seems. There's just some really nice footage there um, of beavers and muskrats um, and the muskrats utilising uh, the beaver habitat. I recommend watching that documentary, so it's available on YouTube and it's well worth, well worth a, a full watch. And this is just an exam another example of beavers benefiting other wildlife, so a moorhen chick utilising a beaver as a stepping stone. And so now I'll just give a, a brief update um, with where we are with the Welsh Beaver Project. So as uh, Mark mentioned, um, the Beaver Project's been going since 2005, so for a, a long time, long time now. So the, initially the, the part of the Beaver Project, this, at the start it was looking at the feasibility of reintroducing beavers back into Wales. Um, so a full feasibility study was done, um, which showed that many areas in Wales would be suitable for the reintroduction of beavers. Um, so this study looked at the ecological side of um, beavers as well as long-term management, looking at um, what, um, public consultations as well, public engagement and listening to what um, other people thought about the reintroduction of beavers. I can imagine uh, reactions quite mixed, um, but over then, um, since then, we've sort of been developing the project further and further. We have had a number of setbacks over the years. We've looked at um, some sites um, um, but for various reasons, weren't able to, to pu uh, pursue those. Um, but our main objective is for a beaver introduction into the wild. Um, we are looking, we have looked at a, a, a catchment uh, for a number of years now. We have made a, a license application to Natural Resources Wales, NRW, for a managed beaver introduction to Wales. And this is in the Dovey catchment. Um, so it's a quite a sh uh, small catchment compared to some other catchments um, in Wales, but has a, a range of different habitats um, and Montgomeryshire Wildlife Trust also have a, a nature reserve within this catchment as well. So we've still got a lot more information to provide to NRW, um, still early days yet um, and in time NRW will review that um, life application and eventually come to a uh, decision on that. So do watch your space in terms of updates uh, for, for the wild release, um, reintroduction of beavers back into Wales. In the meantime, though, or in addition to that, we are looking, uh, working with Montgomeryshire Wildlife Trust on their plans for an enclosed beaver project on their course W Nature Reserve, which is also in the W catchment um, as shown on the previous slide. And so Montgomeryshire Wildlife Trust separately have been looking at the use of beavers for a number of years now. Um, and it's partly to help with habitat management on their course W Nature Reserve. Um, it's a low lying bog, um, but over 20, year, 20, 30 years ago, it was a conifer plantation. Um, and so because of this, because of the historic nature of it being a, a plantation, there's lots of drainage ditches and old tree stumps um, and over time willow scrub has just bounced back and sort of overtaken the reserve. And so uh, staff and volunteers of Montgomeryshire Wildlife Trust have been trying to manage the habitat um, within the, the nature reserve, but because of the legacy of the forestry, it's proven very difficult from a health and safety um, point of view really difficult to get in there to control the willow and when they coppice the willow it soon bounced back again because so much of it and just so fast growing. And so they've been looking at other methods to, to manage the reserve. They have used water buffalo in the past which have worked really well but they found that the water buffalo are only taking uh, the softer vegetation and not really uh, tackling the willow and so looking at other methods and so beavers have been uh, looked at for a number of years now. They've undertaken feasibility studies and we've been working with them to develop this project 
And so part of this, this will be an enclosed project because we want to keep the beavers in an area to, to manage and maintain, uh, to manage the, the willow and restore the, the lowland bog um, habitat. So this is the um, enclosure that was built um, at the end of March of this year. So this is when it was finished being built. Um, and then this is the vegetation that's bounced back since then. So this photo, bottom photo was taken in August. So you can just see the, the vegetation that soon bounces back um, within this area. And so this, um, this project is, is an enclosure. It's not a reintroduction. It's purely for habitat management purposes. And it's a good opportunity to see how beavers could manage the habitat um, we'll be undertaking baseline uh, studies and also looking at it once the beavers are in um, and the impacts they have from there, looking at the impacts on the habitat, but also monitoring invertebrates, um, the floral species as well, and see what comes back um, and be able to get uh, more information from that, which will feed into to our wider knowledge um, of beavers and what they can do. Um, so it is very different to reintroduction into the wild. The management um, is very different, so the beavers will be contained. Um, so be able to, to keep an eye on them very closely. An opportunity to engage with members of the public, visitors to the site as well, an opportunity for people to come and see beavers, see what they do, uh, look at a, a beaver habitat, and hopefully in time see a beaver or two as well. There are three beaver enclosures in, in Wales already, which are privately owned. And we've been working with these landowners of these sites and this has been great to, to engage with people and provide opportunities and to see what beavers can do. And we hope that the course W Nature Reserve can add to this and add to the wider remit um, of beavers being back in Wales. As part of the license application for the course W um, enclosure, um, NRW did run a consultation um, over the autumn. Um, they were minded to grant us a license but they uh, decided to, to run a consultation to see what the general feeling was um, with beavers coming back and we had lots of response uh, to the consultation so we created an e-action um, and we had lots of support through that so we're really grateful and thankful for everyone that supported us during that consultation responding to NRW. We received overwhelming support um, for the enclosed beaver project and also for beavers being back in Wales um, in general so as I said, really grateful and thankful for all your support. Um, it's, we're still in correspondence with NRW. Um, they're sort of providing us with feedback from that consultation and they've still yet to make a decision, but we hope to, uh, to have a decision at some point soon. So, so watch this space um, for that. Um, and so for further information um, on the Beaver Project from the consultation um, to the uh, release into the wild, please do visit our website uh, for project updates um, and for further information on beavers in general. And we hope that one day um, beavers can move in and that's one question we'll keep asking. So thank you very much um, for listening.